You have three different wines. We would like you to identify them as closely as possible. You don't need to describe them. You will have three minutes and 30 seconds. So no common denominator here. I will answer the question back because I will answer to all the other candidates. I will tell them as well. We are not looking for a common point. Thank you. Even if there is one. Good. Are you ready? Yes. Pardon me, I'm going to start with wine number two. If you don't mind. This is a uh, Nebbiolo based wine. This would be fairly youthful, although the color is a bit long. Nebbiolo, I see from Barbaresco, vintage like 20, uh, 2000. Mm, let me check it out. In fact, 2011. 2011, Barbaresco, Nebbiolo based, Italy, of course. The traditional style producer, uh, Serafino Rivella, maybe. One number three is a uh, Malbec based wine from Mendoza, Argentina. Again, very useful, probably even just like 2014. Just like Catina Zapata. Wine number one. Wine number one, I think, is a blend, but a blend dominated by Grenache. This is a wine from, from the south of France, Chateauneuf du Pape Appellation, 2011 vintage. Producer on the first one will be a producer like uh, uh, Je te sens pas faire. I think that's it. Thank you. Could you please provide a full organolytic description and identification of this wine? You will have three minutes. Are you ready? Yes. Start. Great. Wine number one. Uh, wine number one plus. It's a clear. Or actually, it's a slightly uh, unclear, uh, bright though wine uh, with a red wine with a moderate viscosity, youthful color appearance, a deep sort of ruby core leading out to a cerise rim, slightly matte in its in its brightness. No uh, sediment though, no no carbon dioxide. Either. On the nose, the wine is clean. This youthful, I'd say, still youthful. Perhaps a slight hint of uh, evolution here. Comes some really, really bright, both red and black berry character. There's uh, black currants, red currants here. There's juicy dark plum, blackberry. There's some light sort of herbal notes here of uh, the sage and thyme. Uh, there's some sort of barky cassia bark, uh, cedar wood, a little bit of Ceylon cinnamon as well. Might would probably indicate some oak barrel aging here to me. I was venture to say this wine has seen some oak barrel aging, some proportion of it new. There's a gravelly minerality underlying all of this as well. Complex nose. Mm. On the palate, the wine is clean. It is dry, medium body with an elevated acidity, moderate, really balanced alcohol. Tannin structure, which is medium and level. Show <coughs> prep, sorry. Perhaps showing some signs of evolution. Tannins are pretty smooth and fine. Uh, flavors are, again, perhaps slightly evolved with a high intensity. Really, really intense berry notes. Again, a black currant, especially uh, red currants, wild forest raspberries, uh, sort of ripe dark cherries and plums. We have again the spicy notes of cedar wood, cassia bark, cinnamon. Uh, again, confirming that this wine has seen some oak barrel aging, I'd say. And, and and this underlying minerality as well, uh, uh, alongside this uh, light herbal of uh, roasted green herbs like thyme and sage, long finish, very complex, 
well-made wine. I want to say this is about 60 degrees Celsius, so still slightly chill. We'll keep it really fresh. Um, I can certainly see this wine decanted. Decanted for an hour in advance and serve in some large but sleek glasses that will ret ret retain the structure of the wine, but let the wine breathe. In matching this with food, I might want to match something that can tackle those, that intensity of flavor, some dense protein. Now, this is not a super tannic wine, so we, can, we, can, we don't have to go fully overboard with, with uh, something too ripe and too hedonistic in terms of food, but some density of protein is necessary here. So, serve this with a, a uh, thyme and garlic rub, rack, of, rack of lamb, so with some pomme fondante and, uh, and a really sort of thyme ridden uh, uh, ratatouille, for example, and a light source of to go with that wine on. This will age beautifully. Time! You haven't finished with this wine. Now, we have a customer who is hesitating to buy a few cases of this wine. Mm. Could you please convince him to buy it? You will have two minutes. Do you understand the question? Yes. Do I have a customer here? Or... Great. Great. Absolutely. Are you ready? Yes. Thank you. Time! So sorry, I've, have you... I understand you've tasted this wine and you're hesitating. What, is there a nature of your hesitation? Or are you... Have you tasted the wine? Do you like the wine? Or no? I think this wine is really beautiful. And I think it's showing a lot of potential. E even now, in this stage, where uh, it, it's still fairly youthful, it's showing such great balance. Balance of flavor, balance of structure. It's immensely food friendly. It's a... It's a uh, classic style of a Bordeaux blend wine based on Cabernet. Uh, and I, in my opinion, these wines have, can sometimes go a bit overboard in terms of richness and power. This is beautifully well balanced as it is to begin with. So it's showing well now, but I have no doubt in my mind with that intensity of flavor that this will uh, age well at least for, for 10 years, if not more than that. Um, so I, I, I really think this will be a, a beautiful investment for your cellar. It should drink well from day one, it should drink well in 10 years, and hopefully every day in between as well. So uh, I don't think you should feel any hesitation about that. Granted, I don't know the price of the bottle, but I think, I think it, it's well worth it. Um, this will, again, this is such a beautiful uh, match with, with food that you can use this with a wide variety of foods, from something light like grilled lamb sweetbreads to a, uh, you know, to Tuesday night, ribeye steak, anything in between. Um, I think you'll be happy that you made this purchase.